Welcome to Van of Action. It's 26 below zero here in the mountains of British Columbia. And if you're a van builder, van designer, or van dreamer, and you've always wondered, do I need a furnace in my van? Today we're gonna find out. I have a 2018 Dodge Promaster van 3500 completely decked out, rock wool insulation, floors, walls, ceilings, maxed out as much as I thought I could, no furnace. Now, there's no furnace because I never plan on driving in this kind of stuff. I absolutely have no intention of camping in this kind of stuff, but I am curious just how well it's gonna work. So I'm gonna go out, start the van today, and just see how quickly and if the engine uh, can heat up that cab, and then if it does, how long the insulation will hold the heat. Let's get started. Along the way, if you find this useful, give us a like, a share, and a subscribe because we can sure use all the love and it's awfully cold out here and the love makes us warm. Let's give it a try. Okay, here we go. I've walked 100 yards from my house down to the shop and the, uh, right now the, uh, my mustache is starting to freeze already. It's really, really cold. Now I keep the van in this shop all the time. I'm gonna check the temperature in there now. It's still maybe, it'll probably be warmer having been in the shop all like overnight. If that's the case, I'll pull it out and try and get it as cold as I can. Let's just have a look and see. Here we are inside the van and the interior temperature of the van at the moment is about minus 22 degrees Celsius, which is about nine, minus nine degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna pull the van outdoors just to see if I can get it a little bit colder before I try this experiment. So while the van's cooling down even more now that it's outside, I'll just uh, explain to you what I'm thinking. And uh, it'll take a few minutes because my jaw's starting to freeze up and so is my mustache and my beard. But um, it's gonna, this will be probably a little choppy because it's cold and my head's not working just the way it should. But I want to do this for two reasons. I don't ever expect to be in the van in this kind of temperature when it's minus 25 or 26, or even when it's zero degrees. I don't expect to be in the van for any length of time. But it's possible on those shoulder months in the early camping or late camping, if we're at elevation, we may have some cold nights. And so I would like to find out, one, just how quickly the van heats up using the van motor just off the engine then two how long it holds that heat when it's cold outside how effective is the insulation uh that's all i want to know that's all i want to know the um we had when we designed the van initially we had planned on putting in a furnace and um just because that's what you see online everybody's got a furnace and this is a dodge promaster van it's gas fired so from my perspective, number one, propane was not an option. I do, will not have propane as, a, as any kind of a, a power source or heating source in this van. We're not gonna have a, a propane cooktop. We're not gonna have a propane furnace. We're not gonna have a, a fridge that runs off of propane. I think in the world we live in today, having that extra f uh, fuel source isn't necessary. And also having storing the tank, I think is, is, isn't safe in a van. So we're not gonna do that. And I didn't want to introduce a secondary fuel source. This is a gas-fired ProMaster van, so having a diesel-fired heaters heating system didn't make sense to me. I mean, I'd have two. I'd have to have a separate tank. It'd be inside the van. There's the chance of it leaking and smelling and things, and even just filling it up inside the van. I could see being a stinky thing to do. So. I didn't want to have a diesel furnace, which only left gas. And the ProMaster van does have a, an outlet right off the, the, the fuel tank that you can plug a, a, a secondary uh, outlet in that would run your furnace if you wanted to. It seems like an ideal situation. It's easy, to, it's easy to get to. You don't have to take the gas tank out or anything. And it just seemed like if you were going to have it, that would make sense. So during our planning process, that's what we wanted to do. That's what we thought we wanted to do. The last opportunity for energy would be electricity. And when we were camping on our road trip back to Ontario in, in September, and uh, we left in the first part of October, we did have an electric space heater with us that we were camping in, in camp spots that had services available. And there were a couple of mornings when it was a little bit chilly or damp, and simply plugging in that space heater took the chill off in a matter of 10, 15 minutes. It was just, it was really simple and comfortable. 
Um, so that might be something that we want to look at too. There's a couple of complications with that though, because you need to be plugged in. Um, because when it's this cold at minus 26 with lithium batteries, you can't use them, that's for sure. I, I, I don't even know how that's going to work. And it's too cold to even think about it. We'll talk about that later in the video. Let's see how cold it is. Okay, so I've been outside now for about 10 minutes and the temperature's dropped now. Hopefully you can see that. The temperature's dropped two or three degrees. We're down to about minus 28 Fahrenheit and or Celsius and about minus 11 Fahrenheit. And I think that's lots close enough for this experiment I want to run. So now what I'm going to do is shut the doors, shut the windows and turn on the van, turn on the heat. Oh boy, it's cold in here. The, um, I just walked up to the house to get a, a, another phone so I could use it as a timer. And they've issued a warning that the uh, frostbite could happen very quickly at these temperatures. So I gotta be careful. And it's so friggin' cold, I gotta keep my phones wrapped up in a heating pad or they, they're dying on me. So this is a bit, of a bit of a challenge. First thing I'm gonna do is starting from zero, I'm gonna close up the windows. I have the sliding door closed. I'm going to Start the timer and start the engine. And now I am going to, oh, what am I gonna do? I'm going to turn the, the fan up. The heater's on high, the fan is being turned up. We'll see how long it takes to come up the temperature. Things are underway, we'll see how long it takes. We have all, all the wind, the two back windows and the two side windows are covered up with these curtains that we made. And they are thinsely covered with material. And they do a wonderful job of keeping the, the sun out and giving us privacy at night. We're gonna see how well they do at keeping the heat in. It'll be uh, something, something that'll be a neat experiment as well. When we were moving out to British Columbia in, the, in October of 2020, we were driving across the country and in Brandon, Manitoba, the morning we woke up in Brandon, Brandon Manitoba, it was minus 12 degrees according to the, to the, uh, the instrumentation on the van. And we were, we were sleeping in the van. We had absolutely no insulation. There was dew coming off of the, the inside of the ceiling that morning when we woke up. There was frost, which turned into dew, but the inside of the van was frosty in the morning. It was like diamonds when you looked at it. And that morning, all I did was just scoot out of, out of front of the blankets, turn on the motor, turn on the heating in the fan, get back under the blankets. And within about five or 10 minutes, it was cozy. It was comfortable enough to get out and get dressed. Now there was not a lot of air space in that van. It was loaded up with our stuff. So it'll be interesting to see just how this is going. But right now, I'm, even, I'm noticing a difference now. We've been at this now for five and a half minutes. And the temperature in the right at this moment is up to, I bought a cozy minus 13 Celsius. Let's crop back in a minute. We've been at it now for 10 minutes and the temperature inside the van is now about minus four Celsius, which is about 25 degrees Fahrenheit. I can't see my breath anymore. It's feeling, honestly, it's feeling a little bit comfortable. It's not too bad at all. And this is something I wanna know because we may find ourselves caught in an early morning or late night, someplace, especially out here in British Columbia in, at a higher elevation where it's gonna be cold in the morning. I just wanna know how long it's gonna to take to get the chill out of the air and then we can move on, you know, get dressed and get some breakfast and move on. I'm never ever gonna be sitting someplace where it's minus 20 degrees in the van all the time. That's just not gonna happen. And I'll tell you what, if it did, if you were to do that, you'd have, you'd have it raining inside. You'd have a lot of condensation. If you keep the inside of this cabin at a high temperature for any period of time, you're gonna have condensation on the inside skin of the van. I don't care what anybody says. And that's nothing but trouble, absolutely nothing but trouble. Checking in after 15 minutes, the temperature in the cab has, has gone up to plus five degrees Celsius, which is about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you're dressed with a sweater on, it's not that uncomfortable. I mean, after, after minus 26, this feels pretty good. After 15 minutes, it's not bad at all. It's warm enough that I could be out of bed now. I'd be dressed. I could be making a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, have some, getting some breakfast started. It's not bad at all. We'll, uh, we'll just see how far it's gonna go though. Give it a few more minutes and see what happens. The other choice for trying to heat up the space would be to use electricity. As I said, when we were camping and we had services available, we had a little electric space heater. 
If you were if you were camping and you didn't have services though, I'm not exactly sure how you would fire that up because we have uh, lithium batteries in our in our van and they won't function when it gets this cold. They just if you hurt them if you try to use them when they get this cold. And so maybe you'd have to have an AGM or a deep cycle battery that you could use in colder temperatures. But then I'm not sure how you would charge that battery. You'd have to have a secondary charge controller specifically for it because each battery uh, type has its own charge profile. You remember that from the, the battery choice selection uh, video that we did. And so if you had a, an AGM battery to either run the heater or run a, a heater to heat the space around your, your lithium batteries to keep them warm enough to be able to function, you'd have to have two charging systems, two charge controllers. And I'm not exactly sure how you would switch from one to the other unless they were both completely independent, which would just be a ridiculous amount of money. So I'm not, I'm not exactly certain that that would be a practical solution at all. If, you, if, if after 15 or 20 minutes you could heat the inside up using the van, the ca the van motor, uh, then to me that that seems like a perfect solution. Well, let's just see how it continues to go. After 20 minutes. The temperature has risen to about 15 degrees Celsius or almost 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which is really comfortable. I mean, that's just, that's all I need to know. So I'm gonna, now I'm going to shut the van off and just see how long it holds its heat. Well, I got, I guess the cold got to me because I started pushing the buttons all wrong. After about five minutes with the motor being off, the, the temperature inside the van had dropped back down to about four degrees Celsius, just above freezing. The van does not hold heat very well at all, which really isn't surprising because I have like an inch of insulation in the floor. In the walls, it'll vary between maybe an inch to two and a half inches max. And in the ceiling, there's about an inch and a half. And it is the rock wool insula or the, the, the Havelock wool insulation, but it, it's not a lot. It's not gonna hold the heat a long time, particularly when in, in extreme circumstances like this. It's good to know that, but it was, I'm satisfied that in a pinch, I can generate heat and enough heat off the engine to be comfortable. I will not be putting in a furnace, I know that. In these kinds of uh, extreme temperatures too, condensation would be an absolute horrendous situation if I was to keep a van, uh, that van, at up to a comfortable temperature for an extended period of time. This wouldn't make any sense at all. I gotta get back inside where it's a little bit warmer now, so I hope you found this useful. I hope you'll give us a like, a share, and a subscribe. And I hope you have a great new year. And I hope summer comes soon because this, as pretty as it is, is just a little bit ridiculous. Now, once I got back in the house and thought out a little bit, I started wondering if it would be possible to, to run a small electric heater off of the starter battery of the van. You know, you buy small inverters and wire it directly to that battery in the front, or just have it run to one single plug and plug your, your heater into that space. I don't know if that's possible or not. Our little heater draws 1500 watts. I think that would be tough. If the motor was running, would it work? I don't know, and I haven't had a chance to do that math. If anybody watching the video has any ideas, let us know below. Love to hear from you.